silence. Let's just stop it. So it's, it's uh, condensed, huh? So. Um, because it, it, just in two minutes, it's a resume of the whole book. So, uh, if we want to speak about art, uh, we have to speak about what has conditioned art in the 20th century. And it is, on one hand, war. It is uh, the wars, 19th century, uh, the French-Prussian War, the Commune, uh, the First World War, the 20th century, and the Second World War. On the one hand. On the other hand, it is what we call the instantaneity. Uh, the art, as we see today, is a victim of war. And the question, the main question, is it has art become uh, a, a handicap? Invalid. Invalid. Oh, you say invalid. Okay. Invalid. Or has it become invalidated? Invalid, invalidated. So this is a central question, absolute central question. Uh, giving the example, if you see from the 19th century on up to today, in fact, it would make it, and that like it did, a very short resume of the becoming of art since 19th century up to the 21st. Paul would say it has come out of Impressionism, which is essentially relativist. Of course, you can say Impressionism is relativist, as it is linked to the theory of relativity, relativity linked to energy, light, and material. Uh, and this was before World War I and II. And then, after World War I, Surrealism, mainly sort of expressionism, of course. In between, as you know, Marinetti, the futurism, the declaration of the beauty of, of, of violence and, and velocity and, and war. Uh, uh, in, in the, in the, uh, from 1910 on. Uh, but the First World War was, for the arts, like a first wound. In première blessure. The first handicap. And you cannot understand what has become like with serialism, which was breaking up with all traditional art, without the experience of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of war. And <coughs> you cannot understand it the becoming after the Second World War of art, essentially of the deportation of art from, the, from Europe to America, as the deportation of Jewish people and as the deportation of all the despised mankind during that time, you have to put this together. And Paul asked, why haven't we thought together on the one hand the, the extinguishing uh, uh, of, of man, of, of, of uh, uh, the genocide uh, of the uh, World War II, and the deportation of the art to America. And, and of course, you, I'm sorry, and you cannot, and, and, and to the last one is, and if you want to understand Günther von Hagen, for instance, uh, which was mentioned before, huh? you have to see the actionism of Nietzsche. Not Nietzsche, but Nietzsche, Hermann Nietzsche, uh, and, and, uh, and others uh, after the Second World War, the 50s and 60s, the actions. They belong intimately together. Un autre aspect qui conditionne la perte de vue de l'art, c'est évidemment la vitesse, c'est-à-dire l'instantanéité. Je l'ai dit hier, la photographie, l'instantanéité photographique puis cinématographique et enfin télé réelle à travers la télévision et son hyper réalisme, le temps réel, l'immédiateté, l'ubiquité, c'est quelque chose qui a frappé l'art de plein fouet. 
l'art contemporain est devenu moins intemporel que fatalement intemporain. Et le mot est important, ce n'est pas un jeu de mots. Pour moi, l'art contemporain est un art intemporain. C'est-à-dire qu'il a rompu avec ses filiations historiques. Ça aussi, c'est une infirmité. L'art contemporain est en, rompe, est en rupture accidentelle avec les origines de l'art. Je vais lire un tout petit texte très court, 5 secondes, parce que ça résume très bien. Je traduis d'abord. Oui, tu traduis. So this was the first aspect. So I started saying, asking what is the what is conditioning uh, the loss of the sight uh, of, uh, of, uh, of art, la perte de vue de l'art. So the getting out of sight of art. The first one was war, and the second one is the instantaneity. Uh, so the instantaneity is again historically linked to uh, the first medium was photography in the 19th century, then cinematography, and then all the, the tele, uh, uh, televisual uh, um, uh, reality, up to the loss of the referential, I would say, the, the, um, the uh, hyperreal. Um, uh, art has become not only, now this is the question, uh, intemporel, intemporel, how do you say this in English? itself anymore in the time. And in the time means Bergsonian in the duration. It does not inscribe itself in the duration. But there's another aspect that Paul uh, points out, which is more important even. It has become intemporal. My God. And intemporal means uh, that it has lost, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of his neologisms, and one of his many neologisms. So it has lost the link to time and to the historicity so, uh, of, of So it is linked directly to the acceleration of the real. To the what? To the acceleration of the real. Um, so it is what he has been writing about. It is the, the, uh, the accidental breaking up with the tradition of the art. So with the origins of the art. Voilà. Au, au début de, de l'année 2007, Peter Neuver, qui dirige le musée d'art contemporain de Vienne, m'a demandé d'écrire un petit texte qui sera introductif au projet, au programme de l'année à venir. Et je lui ai fait ce texte très court, il souhaitait que ce soit très très court. Au 19e siècle, avec l'impressionnisme et sa phénoménologie, c'était la liberté d'impression qui a été délivré de l'académisme. Au XXe siècle, avec l'expressionnisme et sa dramaturgie, c'était la liberté d'expression qu'il était de tout conformisme. Au XXIe siècle, qui s'annonce, ces deux libertés de l'esprit sont menacées de disparaître devant l'accélération d'une réalité numérique qui efface jusqu'au souvenir de toute représentation. Face à cela, le musée d'art contemporain de Vienne pourrait bien devenir sous peu, sinon le conservatoire de l'improbable, du moins celui de l'inattendu, le muséum de l'accident du réel. So this is a text that uh, uh, Paul wrote for Paul Nevers, who is the director of the uh, uh, Museum of Contemporary Art at uh, the Magnet in Vienna. Yeah. Yeah. 